Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're doing our a series of our special series called Industry Insiders. And we're actually going to do three back-to-back episodes, Industry Insider episodes. I got a lot of feedback from people saying that you miss them and that you like these episodes where what we do is instead of talking with record labels, we actually go out into the world, not literally uh, these days, but we go out and we talk with people who... Um, who benefit uh, record labels or who record labels commonly work with, people like pressing plants or publicists or playlist curators, that kind of thing. And today we're talking with Robin Raymond, who cuts short-run lathes here in Toronto in Canada. In fact, after we got off the phone, I thought about doing a special little run of seven inches with her. Um, and those are actually in the mail today as I'm recording this. So I'm excited to get my hands on those to see what that's like. Um, but we talk a lot. I, I ask a lot of questions that I think will be helpful for our label listeners um, regarding price breaks and what the ideal quantities are, what the sound um, sounds like. You know, is it stereo? Is it mono? And so we talk a lot about that, what their color options are. Um, it's a really good conversation. Um, and I hope that you find it helpful. Please go to our website. I have some other helpful resources for you there. Go to otherrecordlabels.com and that's where you can get stuff like our brand new record label toolkit, which is available at otherrecordlabels.com slash toolkit, which just gives you a bunch of things to help you uh, think about the process of starting a record label, if that's your thing. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode. So let's talk about lathe cutting and and, and especially, um, you know, through this episode, how it's an option for record labels and or, or at least how it pertains to DIY labels. I'm excited because I'm really um, curious about this whole process. And I've just been kind of, when it comes to like lathes and when it comes to like vinyl in general, I've pretty much just been faking it for the that I know, <laughs> but I really don't. There's a lot I have no clue. And people will say these like complicated terms and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, for sure. I'll get one of those. And <laughs> so I'm excited for you to help me fill in a lot of the blanks. And there's a lot I of mean, blanks. Yeah, I mean, that's. I kind of feel like that's kind of my, uh, my niche and really like uh, the opportunity that I have. Um, I, I don't know, I guess in this, in this whole space and, and this, um, market, I guess, yeah. really, um, because I have been kind of a disruptor and have been just kind of like barnstorming my way into it and <laughs> like, kind of like clearing a path for everybody in my life. Right, because um, you kind of expect this to be like an old man's game, eh? Like, this. oh, I mean, and that's that's exactly kind of what it was. I mean, yeah. I thought it was going to be. I mean, I didn't really know what it was going to be like. I was just <laughs> like, I'm going to do that. Let's go do that. Yeah, and yeah. Like even when I went and got the machine, because um, I had to go to Germany to get it. <laughs> okay, uh, I was just picturing yeah. like an old German man being very like yeah, stern. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And he picked me up at the train station, and oh, he was like, "Oh, goodness. but you are a girl." And but I was <laughs> like, "Yeah." <laughs> and he was like, "Girls don't do this." And I was like, "Well." Well, yes, they do now. <laughs> let me ask you before you get into this, Jeremy. Like, you're the only um, female record cutter, according to your website, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, and that's for our folks who are not from the beautiful country of Canada. That's about forty one in forty million people. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, Congrats. It's, it's a it's a pretty. I mean, like it. Women represent two percent of the technologically inclined in wow. music, anyway. So, wow. any, like any any kind of engineering, so mixing, mastering, producing, um, like any of the actual like kind of behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, some sometimes that extends to art departments and and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's two percent. Yeah, I so. that you know it's it, <laughs> I mean that doesn't surprise me one bit. And and what's really um, interesting is when I was doing these studio tours in Toronto, I was it, you know interviewing um, doing videos of 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 different recording studios in Toronto, and our viewers mm -hmm. on YouTube were, were exactly that. And in fact, yeah. it was probably higher. It was probably ninety nine percent male. And, yeah. and like, uh, you know, probably less than 1% were women, but that's, yeah, that's incredible. I mean, uh, I've, I've been fortunate by like 
getting into this whole thing. Um, I mean, I've worked in and out of music since 2005, so mm -hmm. I'm not a spring okay. chicken. I'm not a spring yeah, chicken. No, sure. <laughs> not my first like rodeo foray, but <laughs> I used to work more in the live side and do um, like tour logistics and like ticketing and stage management and production management and like day of show okay. stuff okay. and promoter repping and like that that whole thing. Meanwhile, like toured in a band, played in a band, did all the things. Yeah. Um, but coming into this kind of world and Noah being like, you know, you're the only woman in Canada that does this, right? And I was like, what? Well, and do <laughs> oh. you, I mean, do oh, you have, okay. do you have any idea of like how many women do this in the world? I mean, like you can't um, believe. I was, we were really trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so by the, <laughs> by the, the grace of the Instagram gods, mm -hmm. I have linked up with, I think all of the lathe cutters in the world. Oh my gosh. I think. Sure. So, I mean. All five of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's people that obviously cut on like the BMS 70, um, which we have at Lacquer Channel too. Okay. Um, that's, that's Kevin Park. I mean, he's a genius. Uh, I wouldn't be anywhere that, anywhere close to what I am and what I'm doing if it wasn't for him. Mm. Um, I mean, he's taken me under his wing and like taught me as much as <laughs> right. he's been able to, you know, get through this like thick, thick Albertan skull. <laughs> um, but uh, then there's people that cut on a VMS 80, which is like the direct metal mastering, which we can talk about too. Sure. Um, and then there's all these like these weird German stereo lathes. And then you've got all of the mono lathes that are like Prestos from the fifties and the sixties. And okay. you've got like Franken lathes that people have like made. Oh, Franken out of, lathes. Like, uh, oh yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, Here's, a, it's a crazy world, but I, I think like maybe globally, yeah, there might be 200 of us total. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, globally, yeah. that's insane. That mm -hmm. is, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> um, I uh, might be highball too. I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think women, women wise, though, there's um, there's one female cutter in the UK that has the same kind of machine that I do. Mm -hmm. And then there was a studio, or I, I, I say studio, but there was a, a a duo that did it in New York. But I haven't seen them post anything in a really long time, so okay. I don't know if they're still cutting. I mean, and then there's like some really prolific mastering engineers that are cutting lacquers and oh, DMM cool. That's on cool. the big daddy machines that are women that are like magnanimous, incredible. Yes. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I've seen some of them. Yeah. And, that, and that's yeah. incredible. And that's all. Totally. I, and that's, you know, that's what will, it will take, I think, to change those analytics we were talking about at the beginning of, yeah. and it's, it's the representation. It's people seeing people like you on Instagram and going, Oh, I like, you know, like that German guy, like, oh, totally. a, a woman is doing this. That's, I can do it. Yeah, that's well, great. Well, and like through the making vinyl conferences for the last three, I guess, three years now, 2017, 17, 18, 19, 20, something like that. Okay. Um, I met uh, Jen Tijunio. She is um, in Virginia at the Furnace Record Pressing Plant. Oh, okay, and yeah. And she is the architect behind Women in Vinyl. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. And so I'm like de facto board member, I guess. We don't really have a board yet That's great. because we're trying to figure out where it's going to go. But so it's me, her, uh, Jet um, Galindo, who is a mastering engineer in uh, California. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Amanda McCabe as well. And Amanda is, I can't remember what part of the country Amanda's in. Um, but yeah, so us us four are trying to, um, yeah, create educational opportunities and like create pathways and research stuff and right. information so that people can figure out their place kind of in this world and whether they want to get a job in vinyl or, yeah. you know, what's all available and that kind of stuff too. So we are very cognizant of the underrepresentation, but <clears throat> we're actively trying to figure out a way to reverse that. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can you, um, I, I feel like we've gotten so far ahead that I really <laughs> need you to explain. <laughs> I need you to explain, uh, lathe cutting to, um, 
to our our listeners who are not as smart as you and I. Of course, I oh, know everything about lathe everything. cutting, <laughs> and uh, I could do it right now if I needed to. Uh, no, I'm joking. I I uh, no, I need <laughs> you to explain this. And really, wh- what is the difference between, um, uh, you know, this job that you do and and pressing mm-hmm. vinyl in the traditional sense? So a pressing plant is kind of where you want to go when you have. You want to do a hundred records or more. Okay. Um, lathe cutters like myself um, do like a hundred or less. Okay. And as little as one. So at right. a pressing plant, they have minimums, and you wouldn't be able to get one copy from a pressing plant. Sure. Um, because of the machinations of all the things that they need to do. So. I mean, um, you could maybe get one done, but they would just have to throw the other 199 out. <laughs> And it would be really expensive. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and like you would have to wait for like four or five or six weeks right. or 12 weeks just to get one too. That's true. That's you would, true. So the the way that they're similar is that whether you're getting a lathe cut or a pressing plant uh, adventure, um, your record still needs to be cut. Okay. So if you're getting lathe cuts, I cut directly into plastic. I see. If you're... If you're going into a pressing plant, you get your record cut into a lacquer or into a piece of copper. Ah. And then, so if you're if, if you're going in the pressing plant direction, the lacquer or the piece of copper go to be plated, and then those get plated and turned into stampers, and then those stampers go to the pressing plant, and mm. then you squish. PVC pellets that are heated <laughs> up into like a little pancake puck right. into those stampers. Yeah. And then through steam and pressure, um, that, uh, pl- that plastic puck is smooshed out into the grooves of the, um, the record that was made from your lacquer or copper. I, I actually had the chance uh, here in town to do that um, mm-hmm. once on my own record, and it's awesome. a, a very cool process. Very cool. It I got is. to hold one of those stampers; they're very delicate, and um, yeah. the whole yeah, the whole process was it was quite intimidating. I I found it <laughs> very complicated. I understand why it's so expensive. <laughs> it's true. I mean, and like it's crazy because they can they can fire off like like a hundred in forty five minutes. Wow. So that's, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Whereas like, (laughs) so then if you have like me doing a record, I do them all one by one in real time. Right. I was going to ask you, okay, real time. Yeah, Yeah, of course. So if you have a 20 minute side of a 12 inch, then it takes me 20 minutes to do that one side. And then I cut the opposite side of the record. So I like flip over the record and cut the opposite side. Unbelievable. Do you have to wait? Before you do that, is or is, yeah. as soon as something's cut, you it's good to go. It's final. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I listen to it in real time too. So there's like a two second delay from the cutting stylus to my playback stylus. Okay. So I'm listening to the groove that I'm cutting to like two seconds after it's been cut, oh. and I do that with every single record that I make. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. <laughs> so if I'm doing forty copies for you. <laughs> right. I can, I have listened to your record at least 40 to 45 times. That's very nice cuz that's in like a row. You, yeah. <laughs> you've probably heard those records more than any other person other than yeah. the artists themselves. <laughs> Even then sometimes Even they're then. like they're like how do you know all the words and I'm like oh really? Well, I just listened to it for the last 50 hours. If so. I were you, I would probably <laughs> price a job according to the sound. I'd be like before I give you a quote, let me hear the yeah. music. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes there's like little caveats that I would like to put in there, but yeah. <laughs> I like to. I pride myself on being. Uh, I welcome all kinds of music. That's um, that's good of you. I have like over three thousand pieces in my own record collection. Um, wow, that range from like acetates from like 1906 or 1908 which is like two British ladies talking over tea. That's the oldest record that I have. Oh, that sounds very cool. Yeah, it's really And rad. that would have been like one of the first type of like 
cut at home type of thing or would they have gone into somewhere to have that done or yeah no i i'm trying to figure out where it was made but i think that i think that it might be like a home recording kind of one it's yeah. got a pretty swanky label on it though so i'm not sure um <laughs> and then i have you know, like i have screamo i have uh metal i have country music i have classical i have jazz i mean i have 31 frank sinatra records because oh my goodness frank forever oh. um I, I mean i have every single record alexis on fire has ever made and like doubles of them so that i have all of the colors good too. for you that's that's <laughs> good for you i'm a completionist that's well, my problem i i'm a little bit more of a I don't know how many records I have. Um, I could tell you maybe how many feet they take up in length, but I, I yeah, just, yeah. I don't, um, I would say I'm more of a minimalist. I mean, there's some artists where I would definitely take everything they, they make at the same time. I, I really just want it to fit in my living room. And, and there are times where I would say maybe every two years, I'll look at my collection and maybe purge some, like I'll sell some that I, I haven't listened to in a long time or I don't feel connected to, or maybe there yeah. are freebies or something, but. I, I did that. Um, my granddad passed away and he left me the majority of his collection too. Oh, and he nice. was one of the communications guys for the um, Air Force. So oh. his job was like playing records. So he has a bunch of like really random records. And Did he know can't... that you became a lathe cutter? No, unfortunately, oh, he passed goodness. away before it happened. I know it would have been it would have been perfect. Yeah, it's very um, yeah, it's very it's very in line with uh, like yeah. I imagine like wartime equipment. <laughs> you know oh, I mean, what you're I doing is looks like you're deciphering code from yeah. the Germans. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, there was. I mean, I don't know if you've um, if you've seen that. If there's a movie on Netflix called uh, "The Plot to Kill Stalin," I think. No. Or let's kill let's kill Stalin. No, I, I haven't heard of that. It's like Steve Buscemi and like it's a okay. bizarre cast, but um at the beginning they're uh they're in Russia, obviously, and they're having a concert. And they're like it's a conductor and an orchestra and a girl playing the piano. And then the phone rings and <laughs> the the guy in the in the booth at like the the, the radio booth, because they were broadcasting it over the radio. Yeah. Um gets a phone call and he was like, hangs up the phone and he looks at the other guy and he says, were we recording that? And the guy was like, no, are we supposed to? And he was like, oh no. <laughs> so then they have to get like all of the people back in and they set everything back up and <laughs> you see them like start the concert all over again for them to start cutting a record oh, wow. of it because like that's how they would record yeah. something because they didn't have tape like back in the... 40s so <laughs> okay so let me ask you then you you are um uh, because uh, on this on this subject because we were mm -hmm. talking earlier about the the fellow from montreal um yeah. i remember he he was doing some live performances and so yeah. can you do that can someone sing into a microphone like at the jack white place and and, and go straight to a record theoretically with my machine you could um there's like a few different things that I would need to do in the signal path okay. gear wise. Okay. But there is, a, there is, um, uh, one of my other lays, uh, family from Oslo in Norway. Mm. He actually sent me a video of him like a side stage with a crazy Norwegian punk rock band. Oh wow. Side stage. <laughs> and he was using, yeah. Cause we have the same machine. So he was like, here I am. I'm doing it. <laughs> Was oh like, my goodness! You're insane. There's okay, no there's way. so much. There's so much. I, that's in crazy. That's crazy. I want. There's so much I want to ask you because I, I am curious about these machines. But yeah, uh, let's. Before I still have some questions about lathes themselves. So totally is the the sound quality the uh, like um like what explain the sound quality to me because for some reason I kind of imagine them being inferior and i also you you talked about when we were emailing about stereo lathe and i, I always just yeah. i would have suspected them to be mono so can you tell me a little bit about the sound quality of lathes absolutely so um that's one of the things that i always try and educate people with especially when they're shopping around between different uh lathe cutters um or record cutters um because there are a lot of presto and mono situations out there that do lo-fi. Okay. Um, they cut into like little plastic squares usually. Um, right. But, uh, but there are, but the, the German um, <laughs> created uh, 
a stereo version. So it's kind of like the big bad boy, um, like lathes that you would cut a master on, like right. cut a lacquer or a DMM cut on. Um, it's just kind of a little bit more punk rock and desktop, but I can actually mod mine to cut lacquers on. Oh, so it is like it's kind of the go between between um, the desktop. Uh, kind of like easy bake oven version yeah, right, <laughs> and right. then the, the like grandmaster interesting like, first step of record pressing production and, um and so would you is that true for sound quality too that it's it's almost as yeah, good I'm, i mean that 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 was one of the things that um you know that was uh exciting for me meeting Noah and Kevin from Lacquer Channel. And when Noah was like, you should come and work with us. And I said, okay. And then we did a lot of testing um, where I would like cut and then run it into one of the big rooms and we would listen and then we would make an adjustment and then I would cut and then wow. I would, we would run it back into the room and then we'd AB the source to the record wow. and see like how close we could get. Um, so I like to say, um, especially because we're in a studio environment, my records are pretty close to press records. Wow. Unbelievable. Like, they're stereo. Uh, they're loud. Um, they have they have a pretty um, really low noise floor too, okay. actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you even, what's sacrificed in, the, in your mind. Yeah, I mean, it's... They're a little, they're a little warmer. Okay, um, yeah. I mean, vinyl, like, vinyl is always going to be warmer, right? Um, right. Warmer sounding, um, and like there's, it kind of, it depends on what you're cutting to vinyl too. Um, not everything translates to vinyl very well. Okay. So I mean, I, I really like to caution people with that too because. Um, <laughs> there's kind of a, a a meme slash joke that goes around uh, the lathe boards that <laughs> that is like computers make music for computers. So oh, right. like your <laughs> right. your expectation right. of what your digital beep boop music is going to sound like on a record right. might digital not be reality <laughs> is that an actual <laughs> what, what, genre digital beat boop <laughs> digital beat boop yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's uh like especially when you get into issues with like phase and things like that because i mean everybody is finding their ambient drone noise uh vein right now in the yeah. pandemic like yeah. i don't know if it's just like <laughs> yeah, it's the, the signature sound of the apocalypse or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not all of that music will cut onto vinyl really nicely especially if you have bass that is panned into very very left and very very right you know like, oh yes yeah i yeah I've, I've i've been warned about that before yeah and, so but but i would like, imagine like in the dj community like like house music and dance music would be um, popular to have some of their um, mixes, uh, yeah. you know, cut to single. So does that totally. sound okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, depending, um, you know, if they are trying to make something that is like winning the loudness wars, yeah. we're not going to get along. Right. Um, depending on how much bass there is, too. So, like, there's just kind of. I, I mean, every single track that I look at. Like I have, and I'm so new in my like mastering journey that I have to look at everything. I can't just like, just hear it and be like, oh yeah, it's fine. Oh, like, okay. Like you open I'm it up on that. the computer and. Yeah. I see. I have I see. to look at it through a scope and like yeah. see and, yeah. you know, there's always like some, and I have to look out for the health and safety of my machine too. Oh, I because see. Because. There's like, because the, the the actual stylus is moving up and down and sideways and it's actually carving away plastic to right. create that groove. And, and that's like, that's what we all do, whether it's plastic or lacquer or copper, like we have to like make that groove somehow and physics will actually just like govern what you're able to do. So are you making any audio adjustments or are you going back to the client and suggesting any uh, adjustments to the master? 
Um, if it's something that I'm like, that I'm just like, I'll, I've struggled with for hours and I'm just like, there's no way I can fix this. Like it's in the mix. Yeah. Then I'm like, yo, you got to do it. Right. Cause I can't fix your stems. Right. Um, but if it's just like minor things where I'm like rolling off a little bit of the base or like taking a little bit of the stereo image down or adding a little bit more of a de like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool to do all that kind of stuff. Um, I just like try to not change what it sounds like too much. If I find that it's like really going to be a dramatic change where it doesn't sound like the file I was provided, then I'll go back to the client and be like, Hey, (laughs) this isn't working. (laughs) Yeah, because that could love you mean it, but (laughs) that could affect their expectations too. Yeah, exactly. So is because, this? Like, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Like everybody's always comparing it to digital. Right. So you're like, oh yeah. geez, yeah. Um, you want to try and get perfection, but oof. are they <laughs> are they sending you a high resolution audio? Like, how do you want the audio? Is it twenty four or forty eight or or? Yeah, I mean twenty four forty eight um, ninety six is great. You know, wow. any anything that you want to give us is awesome. I've been able to coax some brilliance out of mp3s yeah i imagine Um, yeah but uh yeah i mean if we like that's that's the other like hard and fast rule that i have and not just because i work at the studio as well but also kind of the hill that i'm always going to die on but there's some um record cutters lathe cutters that will do playlist records and i just won't do them oh really what is that like a playlist record so somebody will be like, "Oh, here's my my Spotify playlist. Can you put this?" Oh, online for me? right, and, that's, and I'm like, "That's sketchy, no. <laughs> right? That's sketchy, yeah." yeah Interesting. A a it's a bootleg. Yeah, yeah. So you're just blatantly stealing, and you're already <laughs> stealing. So there's yeah. that, and then B, like the fidelity is right. is just not is not good. Right. So it, and it's you know we we want to make sure that we're giving something good out of the studio always so like just you know studio quality that's or so funny so you get asked get that it. people ask all the time it? oh my gosh i time. bet i bet so yeah. i couldn't come down there with my iphone and just bluetooth you my favorite no nope. spotify playlist yeah. and oh no nope. what well, a bummer i won't do it i mean there's people <laughs> out there that will and i mean i probably could make a lot of money doing it but right I just, yeah but the i mean at some point the fbi is going to come b- blasting through your door or the, well, the I rcmp mean, because- yeah, well, and because like Lacquer Channel is the oldest mastering studio in Canada, and right, we have made some historic records there. Right, we have totally. incredible relationships with artists, labels, managers. You know, I just feel like it's a point of integrity. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Where no, it's I, just I, like, yeah, it's just the one thing that I'm like, sorry, like. <laughs> yeah. I won't do it. No, I, to- I totally, I totally agree. Oh, However, okay. if you want to do a cover of that song, right? Sure. sure. No problem. <laughs> okay. Sign your, sign your IRC, and we're good. <laughs> so, te- yeah, tell me the, um, uh, tell me the the process on how you got into this because y- you were telling me about, um, you know, working in in live sound and on the event side of things. But I'm I'm curious, and 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 I'll give you some time because I want I want to hear. Uh, the continuation of of the German fella who, who oh, yeah. <laughs> picked you up from the train station. Sure. Um, so uh, let's go back to <clears throat> 2011, and I was working for the like third largest concert promoter in Canada, okay. uh, the Union, out of uh, Edmonton and Calgary. Cool. And um, I had just kind of got back from an. Um, I think my last tour with Motley Crue. Oh, Um, wow. And And you were like, I'm done. That's it. No, no. I mean, it was, I mean, I had a total fight club moment with Tommy Lee and that was super weird. Um, (laughs) Because we were like, my education is actually in like human performance and I was like a manual therapist and an athletic therapist. And so I kind of like, walk between medicine and music my whole entire life. And it's just been kind of one thing or the other. And hmm. um, so I went back to school and um, resigned at the promoter. 
and started working for the Canadian Olympic bobsled skeleton team. Oh, wow. And so I did that uh, and the Canadian women's hockey team as well. Wow. And so that was like right before Man, the Sochi career. Olympics. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've had a life for sure. Um, so that was right before the Sochi Olympics. Um, so I was doing like tour logistics and stuff, kind of like my tour job um, with a little bit of therapy on the side. Yeah. And my base, my old bass player and I were going to Metallica in Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, man, what are we doing? And I was like, I don't know. I like, I don't, I don't even know at this point because he was doing civil engineering and just like hating it. And we're like, why are we musicians in our thirties? This is awful. Yeah. <laughs> just like whining and crying and buying guns and roses tickets for three weeks later. And <laughs> like just being silly. And, um, I was like, well, color me crazy, but Calgary has the only record pressing plant in Canada right now. And he's oh, like, right. What was that he's called? Like, Canada boy. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. And he was like, you know more about records than anybody that I've ever known in my life. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I like records. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, why don't you talk to them? And I was like, yeah, I could do like their social media or sales or something for them. Yeah. I was like, I could, I could do that. And he's like, yeah, totally. So I was like, all right, I'm going to call them. And so I started to try and like figure out what was going on and they had actually closed. And so I took it upon myself to figure out what um, it would look like to get investors and update the equipment and reopen wow. and like get it going. Yeah. So that was a big was deal having, when they closed. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really sad and it like, I mean, it was uh, old equipment and just like kind of a comedy of errors where, you know, just if they could have had, I mean, like nobody could have foreseen the way that vinyl like surged back right. the yeah. way that it has. Totally. Um, so they were just like, they, it was a perfect storm really. But, right. Um, their hearts were in the right place. Um but their landlord was trying to do the same thing that I was trying to do. So him and I were being pit against each other. Wow. And so I was like talking to all these like oil dudes and I was like, Hey guys, like you should give me $400,000. And <laughs> that, That's a really great idea. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, then the, uh, and I was working kind of for a label, uh, inner ocean in Calgary. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I, I spoke with, Corey, with them. Yeah. Okay. No like, way. Yeah. He was like, have you ever thought about like this? Like, he's like, you love records. He's like, what about making records on this machine? And he's the one that showed me this machine. No first way. Off. And I was like, Oh, that looks like something I could do. And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's really expensive and you have to go to Germany. And I was like, I go to <laughs> Germany all the time for the last five years with bobsled. Like, Okay. <laughs> wow. And um, yeah, so I was just like, so I just started power bombing this little German man with emails until he was like, okay, January. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So, <laughs> and, and do, do they make these machines? Like this yeah. guy makes the machines yeah. on, de yeah, on demand kind of thing. Yeah. He, uh, wow. Yeah. He's, he makes every single part of it. Um, it's kind of like a proprietary thing. Um, uh, how did you I, know that you were going to, like, when you committed to this, I imagine it's costly. Yeah. How did you yep. know you were going to like this or that you were going to, I mean. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, and like, to to be totally honest with you, Scott, it showed up six weeks after I went to Germany. It showed up on my, on my doorstep in Calgary in a big crate. Yeah. In like a hundred pieces with no manual. Oh, man. And I sat down on my front step and I cried. And I was like, what did I do? All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Now, wait, let me ask you, could, yeah. could you not have gotten one used from someone who gave up this dream in, in America or in Canada? Um, I mean, they come on the secondary market sometimes, but I don't know what it is about the people that have had them before, or if they're just like trying to get their money back. Oh, I see. But it's always like, like, it was the machine to like, if you go over there right now and you go, Hey, Siri, can I have a machine? He'll be like, sure. Give me 5,000 euro and it's yours. Wow. 
And then some of the some of the people that are trying to resell them, it's like seven thousand dollars Canadian or ten thousand dollars Canadian or yeah. ten thousand American oh, plus I shipping see. plus this. Plus oh, that. I see and what I'm you're like, saying. Yeah, you might as well just get I'm it like, from the source. Yeah, I'm right. like, why why would I give you all of this money when you might have broken it? Sure, and. So I don't he, know what you've done. So he ships it to you, but you, wh- why did you go there? To, to, for him to teach you? Yeah. Oh, my Yeah, goodness. that's kind of his, like, he's kind of a gatekeeper that way. And I really respect him for that. Right. Um, some people talk a lot of smack about him because they've had some negative interaction. Um, but he is an <laughs> absolute sweetheart. I, I can't say enough about him. He answers every single question I've ever had. That's he, nice ships me anything that I need whenever I need it. Um, I mean, I, right before Christmas, I had like a catastrophic year failure and he sent me a replacement part in two days during wow. the pandemic from Germany. Wow. That's incredible. Now he must yeah. be loving life because this little resurgence must be catching him by surprise. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's had lots of people inquire. I mean, but that's like, that's his one thing is like, you have to come to Germany so I can teach you how to use it. Yeah. Because like, you know, he, he's like, I want to make sure that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, Cause it is like mastering is kind of a dark art for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, oh, and then sure. record cutting for sure. Record cutting for sure is like another layer on top of that. So how long were you, were you there for his, his little workshop? 18 hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and just a crash course. Literally. Is he yeah. a good teacher? Oh, I mean, I, yes. For, for me, it was perfect. Um, have you seen, I mean, I, okay, wait, sorry. How, okay. No. You were talking a lot about uh, hockey and bobsledding. So have you seen the yeah. mighty ducks, the first mighty ducks movie? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you remember Hans, the guy who uh, <laughs> sharpened the skate? That's who I'm yeah. per, I, I'm imagining. <laughs> Am I close? <laughs> So, um, so he's like, uh, I mean, he's just a little bit shorter than I am. So I'm like five, six. I, I imagine so him like a little bit of a, a Yoda character when it comes that's to That's exactly how pressing. I describe him. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, <laughs> and then his brother is like, so if, if, um, if Yoda and Chewbacca were a record cutting duo <laughs> and lived in, in the hinterlands of Germany. That's these two. Oh so, man. I wish this was a Netflix series. Like you getting <laughs> him, him, you stepping out of the cab and being like a woman. And yeah. the, oh, I would love this. It was, it was so funny. Cause like I had, like I had purple hair and he was just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Hi. <laughs> okay, so he teaches. Now, uh, I forgot to ask you. This goes on. These yeah. go on to like um, blank discs. Is that right? Yeah. Like you don't mm-hmm. have these pucks that you squish. No, 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 no. So I get, um, I get my records, um, and I like, I call them like records with like air quotes. Yeah. Um, so I, I get my blanks from Germany, from Surrey, um, oh, okay. or from France. Um, there are a few other uh, blank suppliers in the world, but I have the best success with um, the French ones and the German ones. I'm trying to find like a Canadian supplier. Okay. Uh, I just haven't had enough time to do like enough R and D and like testing. Right. Oh, I see. Because I've I've been so blessed um, with how many people have trusted me to make their records in the last two years. Um, it's been incredible um the people that i've had the pleasure of working with i mean and people from all over the world like singapore new zealand um i'm doing a record for a guy in chile right now um i've got a bunch of musicians that i work with in the states like wisconsin michigan um and how do they going back to the discs how do they compare to um to like the vinyl we get from from pressing plants, are they are they heavy? Are they lighter? Are, can you do colored or transparent? Yeah, so I'm the only person in Canada that does colored records. I think wow. like for lathe for lathe cuts, um, they're a little bit more expensive. Yeah. They're really like they're a stiffer record. Okay. Um, they're uh, macrolon is the plastic. Okay. Um, and then and, the, and is, like is there okay. like a limit of colors? Like just what do they have in their catalog? Yeah, it's like last year, red was super hot and I wasn't able to get any red. I could only get blue and green. And the blue was like this beautiful, transparent cobalt 
Okay. And the green, I like to call Slimer green. But okay. when you cut yeah, it, yeah. it's like this beautiful, like emerald Christmas tree kind of green. Uh-huh. Um, I've got some red ones coming in right now, and it's like there's a transparent kind of cherry That's cool. color, like a like an apple. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty excited about those. I asked uh, the guy's name is Steve, and I said, "Hey, Steve, do you have like, you know, do you have any other plans for like?" new hotness and he's like yeah keep your peepers peaked and i was like all right nice so So there's um, more colors coming yeah uh, but the clear ones and the black ones i get from from surrey from germany because i find that they are soft so they cut really well so i get a really good stylus life out of it i see i Um, see and the noise floor is like veritably zero so how How affordable is it for labels to choose lathes as opposed to a full investment into a pressing? And and at, like, where's the the quantity, the ideal quantity where a label or a an independent artist could could um, by chance make a profit off of a handful of these? Well, and so that's like that's the thing that I kind of always have the conversation with everybody about because. It kind of depends on like how you're trying to sell them. Like if you're trying to sell it like a press record, like I'm not going to be able to match that price point yeah, right. <clears throat> ever um, because I do need to pay a little bit to myself for my time. Sure. For doing That's it. That's fair. Um, a lot of people are, are like, oh yeah, give me a price on a hundred. And I'm like, you don't want that. Trust me. Oh, right. Cause there's no price okay. breaks, right? For your time. Yeah. Well, yeah. There, yeah. I mean, there are, um, I like, like I'll do a price break on a one-sided record versus a two-sided record. So like sure. if you're just okay. doing a, a batch of like one-sided seven inch singles, I'll do a break, um, right. because it's just, it's easy to rip all those off. But a really hundred times 40 minutes is not <laughs> like, there's really no. no way to discount that. That's insane. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the thing, but at the same time, sometimes it's, if you want your records quickly, I might that like the the price point difference might be in your favor to get them with me instead of getting a lacquer cut or a DMM I cut see. and then having to get stampers and then having to get in line at the pressing plant. I see. Because sometimes you might be looking at like eight weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks yeah. to get well, in a pressing plant, and it's crazy whereas, right now, right? Yeah. Whereas I try and have everybody's records in hand in like maximum six if I can do it. Wow, that's unbelievable. So. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, okay, so uh, taking away all the people who are just doing one-offs as like a, a birthday present or something, mm-hmm. what is the average quantity that people are ordering? What's like a comfortable number where the price is comfortable, you're comfortable with it, and these people? For me, it seems like I do a lot of 15, 12 inches or 25, 12 inches. Okay, I try not, that makes like, sense. When, when, when people are asking me, I, try, I say like I, I usually don't do more than 30 or 40 12s. Yeah. Just because of the just because of the prices. Right. Um like the nice thing about lathe cuts and I find and I like to say this to labels especially is like um we can do we can do like one copy and then you can put that up and then you can do your pre-orders ah. and then you know exactly how many you should cut. Oh, then that very way you're cool. not holding in, then you're not holding inventory. Yes, and yes. then it's easier to reorder, and they can and they can I do photos of them and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's oh, yeah. so and, smart. And, and like, I'll just send out like I'll send out a test cut, especially like if anybody is doing more than twenty with me, I'll always give them a test cut so that they can make sure that they're that they love it and yeah. they're happy. Yeah. Before we go forward with so anything, what, I think what you were saying a couple of minutes ago. Um, mm. that I, I, and I don't know if you were getting to this or if that you alluded to this, but you know, when you have a, te- when you have a pressing of 200 or 300 or 500 from a pressing plant, yep. you can get, you could really price them down to like 15 or 20 bucks. But so, oh, I think if, if, if I'm reading you right, like if you're doing 25, you really should be pricing these to your fans as if they're getting one of 20 records and therefore, yes. they should be okay with spending thirty or forty dollars or more totally. on a, a collector's item, so to speak. Yeah, that and, and that's kind of like that's the way that I like to to 
to put it to them too, where I'm like, this is hand cut. This is bespoke. This is yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, this is made for you by me in real time. Yeah. So there's also not going to be any errors on it. It's a one of a kind in a, in a way. It it it, it is a hundred percent. I mean, yeah. because like not all of the lead ins will be the same because of where I like choose to lower the stylus. So I might wow. do you know like two wraps of the lead in or, you know, I like, I cut all the labels myself. Usually sometimes I'll get like really flashy ones. If it's like, I'm doing, um, a soundtrack for, um, a movie, um, for the, for, um, some people in the States yeah. right now. So I got some like really flashy labels done for them. Cause nice. I was like, Oh, I mean like this is cause they did a Kickstarter to, to oh, do cool. their, their film. So the vinyl is actually like, um, a kind reward. of their Kickstarter packages. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, so and, those are really cool. And so what about the packaging options? So you said labels. Um, and, yeah, so I do labels, inserts. I do full-color uh, printed jackets. Wow. Um, I've got a really great um And you can do just like, like minimum, like low quantities of that? Yeah, I can do one. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and the, like the price point is actually pretty decent. Um, you know, like I... I say like, you know, if you're getting one record, you might as well get two yeah. <laughs> because, you know, generally the the printer will send like two jackets anyway. So you might as well have them both. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like um, labels, inserts, poly bags, uh, I, every single record gets a poly lined sleeve to make sure that your record is like beautiful and, you know, kept nicely there's no scratches from paper sleeves yeah because nobody wants to have that yeah um <laughs> I, I etched them my by like I, I i put um i can i can write on them so there was at um christmas time last year i guess two mo- a month ago yeah um okay i was like hey i wrote this song for my wife for christmas Oh, um, wow. Can you put it on a record? And I was like, absolutely. That's amazing. So we did a seven inch and um, like their song, he like, he did a cover of their song and then he That's cute. We did the, the song on the other side. And yeah, their wedding photos were the labels that we did. Oh, and then wow. I, I wrote like happy anniversary or happy birthday or whatever in the dead wax. Too, oh, wow. That's really cool. Cause, yeah. Cause I can do that. So, That's great. I mean, I, I have such a good relationship with some other providers that, you know, we can, if people want stickers, if you do want die cuts, like we can, anything is on the table. And that's kind of like why I don't like on my website specifically, I don't have pricing Yeah, because every single project is so different that I would rather have the conversation and be able to customize it based on like what you want to do. And then if it's like, if the price, blows your mind then we can be like okay well we don't have to do this and we don't have to do this but what if we did this and here's some options this way right here's how we can make it cheaper here's a way to do this but right um that's really i'd rather have i'd rather have that like to make it affordable for labels and stuff because like i do i do offer a little bit of a, a break for labels specifically because they're giving me um subsequent jobs too right, sure. so that's great i would rather like keep that um, machine going and give them good product that they can rely on and, and that kind of stuff too. So I wonder, um, I love this idea of like, you know, doing special editions. I've got a record in, in a couple of months that's going to be 10 years old. And I was thinking, man, awesome. I should maybe do like 10 copies or something and yeah. sell them for a premium or whatever, you know, just to whomever wants it. Totally. That'd be fun. We should talk after this. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, no, totally. I love it. I mean, I, I love doing anything. And like the, I say that my mandate is like bringing vinyl to the people because I, there's always a way to do it. I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way to talk to um, the indigenous leaders from the CDC and stuff and figure out if there's a way to do or help with their archiving project. Oh, cool. Because they've been um, going to different, um, indigenous groups and like recording examples of their language, their language, and, yes, that's right, and stories and stuff. But they're doing it all digitally. Oh, and okay, yeah. I would love to be able to give them a physical format, all right? To go to go along with that, so, right? Oh, that's. Awesome. I mean, that's kind of like that's awesome. 
it's the dream project. But. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, it's yeah. it's so awesome. You know, it, um, it, I was reading the Sun Sun Records biography a couple years ago, and and oh, cool. um, what's his name? Uh, Sam Phillips was got his start by recording, and then you know. Um, uh, pressing records of like funerals or people's mm-hmm. like graduations or church services or weddings and stuff. I think that's so cool. I, I think that would be fun to do today for certain things. Oh, totally. There's um, one of my compatriot colleagues um, that lives in the States in Tucson. He has a gig with the Nashville like football, like soccer team uh-huh. to record all of their goal calls. Okay onto record okay and then they the man of the match gets like a record of all the goal calls oh wow (laughs) that's so cool yeah little things like that eh that's so funny totally i mean like i did um uh part of tanya tagak's uh audiobook on a seven inch oh nice to pair with like a documentary or something that they're doing with the film portion of it or something. So, I mean, there's like, it, that's the, it's the coolest part of, about what I do. Like, it's kind of like, well, let's see what works. Yeah. There's, there's always like, there's only been one record that I was like, I can't do this in the last two years. Really? That's incredible. Well, and I mean, I think what's so cool about this gig is that it's, a, an innovative space in the music industry, even though it's like a very old technology. It's to me, yeah. it's like I think if somebody brings you just a record and a jacket, it's boring. But like for for somebody to use this as a way to really excite their fan base, I think it's a very cool thing. It's been the, I think the gold standard of what's been going on in the pandemic is like people wanting that tangible format. Mm. Um. You know, like whether they're doing a an online concert or a streaming thing or whatever, but you know, we're all missing that touring, yeah, that's right. live show interaction where you know you get to have the moment with the person. I mean, and everybody's got like a hundred thousand black T-shirts, so that's the last <laughs> thing that you need. But yeah. it's really easy to spend like ten bucks on a seven inch, especially if it's a new song from the band that you haven't heard before. Yeah, that's a good point. So. Yeah, I remember actually um, when Arcade Fire came out with their last record that they pressed their first single to yeah. vinyl, like I think to maybe just like a handful of copies and put it in a totally. record store somewhere yeah. and made people kind of race to get it. But that's so, you know, that's so cool. And I think even um, regular artists can do that by just saying, you know, here's a new song I wrote, it's on vinyl. <laughs> You know, you can yeah. get well, and 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 that's the one thing. Like now that more people are being armed with doing their own digital distribution, their own digital deals, and things like that. Like working with CD Baby and and TuneCore, whoever. Like yeah. you can kind of quarterback your own career now. If I give you the tools to circumvent needing a label. Right. And like no shade, but sure. <laughs> <you know? laughs> wrong show to like, say that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this um, episode will be released on New Year's Eve. Five years from now. <laughs> um, but it allows it allows people to like explore that space where they're like, hey, I didn't have enough money to make a hundred records or I yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah. I didn't have the the backing to do X, Y, Z. And now, you know, I'm like, oh, you want to make five? Let's do it. Like, you want to make 15? No problem. Here's a, like, here, with, like, with Profit, that's crazy. Like, yeah, she's nominated that's true. for the Polaris Prize, right? Here's so a crazy can, idea. Can you imagine if an, an artist, I was just thinking about this, I've got a record yeah. coming out in 10 months, and it's done yeah. now. It's mastered this week. And I, I'm thinking, how fun would it be? I don't know if I would do this, but... Um, if to sell one copy of your unreleased record like six months of, of before the the release for like you know two hundred and fifty bucks or something, I, oh, yeah. I mean I personally would would pay that to an artist that I love as a way to totally. support them and but you know that's the kind of things that could be really cool because you know it's on the only people who can hear it are are the people who have that record. Totally. Oh, I mean, and and like you know, it like it might get it might be 
bootlegged if they have the wherewithal if to they do. Yeah. use a Go USB ahead. turntable, blah, <laughs> yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean... If somebody's supporting, yeah, if somebody's supporting you, I don't, yeah. yeah, totally. I love I this. Mean, that, this was, is, that was one of the coolest things that I did um, last year, 2018. I, I don't know. Days make no sense anymore. Yeah, I don't anymore. know what year it is. But I did 125 for Dallas Green. Wow. And that was super rad for me. And then to go on Discogs and look that record up and see that it's going for like $350 for a seven inch. I was oh, like, wow. What? <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> but oh, that's I the bet. nature of it because there was only that many made yeah oh that's so, so cool i'm like that and that's the thing so i mean like sometimes when people are uh busting my chops about pricing a little bit i'm just like well this is a finite supply yeah like, absolutely nobody uh, nobody can make any more. Well, I think we've touched on it so much <laughs> through this episode, but I wanted to ask you, you know, before mm-hmm. before we end, I wanted to ask you uh, about your thoughts on why vinyl has become so popular. And I think we've touched on it in a hundred different ways, but, you know, there's so many years after its initial reign, uh, why do you think it's, it's popular again? Um, I do think it is because of that tangible-ness where... Yeah everybody just wants that moment they want that thing they want a piece of the person the band that they resonate with that Mm -hmm. they you know that speaks to them and this way they have something that they can hold on to whereas like streaming like it it just like really puts the importance of the of music and the format in the forefront again Right. Rather than putting it just like as a background noise or, yeah, you know, it's in the car or whatever. Like you actually have to actively take it out of the sleeve, take it out of the plastic, put it on the turntable, <laughs> clean the thing. You know, like I was saying this when I was like moving all of, well, not all of my records because I didn't even get to move across Canada with all of my records. So I still have 11 crates of records at my parents' house wow. in Calgary. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. And, and I have, and I have like I don't know, ten of them right here looking at me, and, <sighs> and they're all in disarray. And I just was like, oh, I get to reorganize my records, and I was like, that's great. Oh, that's I was like, fun. Oh. And yeah, and I was like so excited because I was like, oh, there's some that have not been out of their jacket in a while, and it'll be nice to give everything like a little bit of a shine and a play. <laughs> and, you know, like... You're in the right line of work. Totally. I mean, it's it's funny. Like, I have... Um, I, I'm a pretty heavily tattooed musician, and um, I got sparrows on my shoulders, one for each of my grandparents, and I got one... The one with for my granddad is like a sparrow with a record, and it's in its claws. Oh, cool. So That's awesome. It's like, and that was like in 2005 or something. So it's, Oh it's, wow. It's just been like, that's yeah. what him and I did. Yeah. Like my whole, my whole childhood was all about records. And that's so like, cool. So it's like self-fulfilling prophecy, but um, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're inconvenient, but I think that's like, it's a, it's a moment to unplug and it gets you away from digital like it gets you away from your phone it gets you away from the computer it's just like there's something warm and like well, totally there's something so religious and so ritual about it mm-hmm. i mean i recently got totally. a turntable um that isn't automatic i for the longest time i had a, a a cheap one that had a start button and everything and auto stop and so i re- i got a a better one and but then i uh, i noticed that you had to like drop the arm yourself and then when it got to the end you had to lift the arm and at, yeah. at first i was like oh that's kind of a pain in the ass but then I, I realized like it really is now like this incredible ritual of like lifting the lid putting yeah. the record on dusting it you know dropping the needle and then you have to stick around for when it ends and and uh, i actually yeah. kind of enjoy it now totally i mean and, and i i feel like that's the one thing where there is like an education part um, between a lathe cut record and a press record. So 
Um, there's like a couple of technological things, like uh-huh. technical details between late type records where they don't really work on automatic record players. So oh, like, interesting. And if you have like a Crossley or, um, and like no shade. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Any kind, any kind of turntable. And I will say this at the top of my lungs uh-huh. from the top of any building. If a turntable gets you into music, I, totally I don't agree. care what I don't care what kind of turntable it is. I totally I'll tell agree. you how to yeah. hack it Good so that you. so that we can make it sound <laughs> the best. No problem. But delays like, have a problem on those. They don't have a problem. It's just that. Um, if the tone arm doesn't have a weight on it, which mm-hmm. is usually what happens with the Crossleys, the the like the tone arm doesn't stick down in the groove. Okay. So you just need to, and the hack for this is to put like a penny or a, I mean, who has pennies anymore? If you have like a like a nickel or a sure. quarter, yeah, you put it on top of the head shell and you put a little piece of tape on it so it doesn't fall down off of the record. Oh, cool! And it gives it enough weight to stick down into the. Okay, into yeah, the, I can imagine. Yeah, those those arms yeah. are quite light. Yeah, and so sometimes they just like they kick out, and then everybody's like, "Oh my god, the record's defective!" And I'm right. like, "It's not. Yeah. Take a breath. Everything's fine." But also um, because of the RIAA curve. Like and the standards for the recording industry uh-huh. of America, blah blah blah. Um, there's a certain amount of lead-in that those that press records have, whereas lathe cuts don't. Okay. Um, so it's not going to do the same amount of revolutions, and it doesn't have the same depth because some cutters like to have a really heavy uh, stylus, so they cut really deep grooves, and some like because I I cut on like a two millimeter thick disc. Okay. Which is like 180 grams. Oh, nice. It like equivalent like that. I just yeah. like to have a thicker, weighter, weightier one. But you can have a 1.5. You can have a one mil. Uh, you can do flexies, which obviously you can't have a super weighted turntable if, or a uh, super weighted stylus if you're going to do a flexi because okay. you'll rip right through it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but so there's it's just kind of like you know sometimes you have to have a little bit of trial and error with things like that. But I mean. I love talking about records. I mean, that's that was a whole <laughs> like impetus for my original Instagram. Like before I even got into cutting records or whatever. Like my Instagram was just like, "Hey, everybody, here's my records." Let's here's look my records. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you said I think before we were recording. I don't know if it was when we were recording. You did you've did, last year in 2020. You did 1700. Is that what yeah, you said? That, yeah, I shipped like I shipped 12. 1,255 or something like that. But I mean, sometimes things go wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Unbelievable. (laughs) And so when things go wrong, I need to start from the beginning. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's, yeah, that's crazy. So that's why like, I want to make sure that everything is perfect before I start cutting. Because I mean, if you have a problem, then it's just nightmare inducing. But but yeah, I, I, I cut about 1,700 records last year. Um, I think so far this year, I'm at 225. Wow. So you're... you're 25 uh, days in? <laughs> yeah. You're ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So... Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, I love I love doing it. I love being busy. I like being competitively priced um, so that I get records into people's hands. Um it's the best job in the world. I'm I'm so Good for I'm you. so stoked and thankful to be doing it. Um, I mean, being able to talk with you is incredible too. Like I've listened to the podcast for so long, <laughs> kicking the idea of starting a label around, and I'm like, do I have time? I don't know. <laughs> yes, I do. I'll make it work. Do it. Like, yes. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's been it's been wild. Like moving out here was crazy. People are just like, you did what? And I'm like, yeah, I know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, thank you yeah. so much for doing this. I think our listeners no. are going to um, find this extremely helpful. I hope so. I mean, it, it, um, my email is is always on. So, I mean, if anybody has any questions, like please feel free to reach out. If you have questions about mastering or where to get records made, if you you know need yes. a custom plant, there's like I can I can hook you up if you need any recommendations for anything i'm happy to demystify anything <laughs> That's right. in the world of vinyl because <laughs> somebody's got to be the um 
somebody's got to be the Willy Wonka of vinyl, <laughs> and I think that's me. <laughs> and thank you all for listening. Go to redspaderecords.com to find out more. And we've got a couple more of these uh, Industry Insider episodes coming up all in a row. So make sure you subscribe and stick with us. Um, get all of your free resources for independent records by visiting otherrecordlabels.com. Thanks for being a listener. <laughs>